Okay, so tonight we are talking about Lucky Shot, the almost botched assassination of Franz Ferdinand. It is June 28th, 1914 in Sarajevo, Bosnia, as annexed by the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. Heir to the throne, Archduke Franz Ferdinand and his wife are visiting and are about to go see the city. In an open-topped car, they are riding in despite significant security concerns about the Archduke getting bombed, which is the first of so many mistakes made in this story that we need a counter. That counter's actually at two already. We don't have time. Meanwhile, a nefarious plot has been hatched to, yes, bomb the Archduke by the best-named secret Serbian military society, the Black Hand, which I kind of imagine as a group of like thick, mustachioed men conspiring over an ornate lamp, but it's actually... That, no, that's that's exactly right. Now they wanna make the Southern Slav state sovereign. Ferdinand seen as an impediment, they've decided to take him out. Resulting in kind of exactly the opposite of what they wanted, but tonight's about nothing if not mistakes. So the Black Hand has recruited some assassins. They've gotten some guns and bombs. They've learned to use them in a public park because apparently that's cool. They did some other crazy spy shit and trust me, the mistake counter has gone up because none of their park training included reading this as we are about to see. now. The Archduke has been offered additional guards due to the bomb threats, but they're not dressed fancily enough to accompany an Archduke. I shit you not. And that's why they stay behind. And because what could possibly go wrong with death threats afoot, a newspaper has published the route the Archduke will be driving, allowing our seven assassins to set up shop along the route. Which brings us back to the present. It's motorcade time. All right, the Archduke's car is going left to right on the lower road here. It approaches the first assassin. He's ready. He's going to do it. He chickens out. That's okay. We got more assassins. Here's the next one. He also chickens out, as does the next guy and the one after that. Finally, the car gets to Nedeljko Kabrinovich, who is no chicken. He throws his grenade. It bounces off the Archduke's car before detonating and just injures some bystanders. But our man is sticking to the plan, failure or no. He takes a cyanide pill and he jumps in the river for good measure. Unfortunately, the river is only about four inches deep. And not only is he just lying in shallow water, the cyanide is expired and just makes him vomit. He's arrested. Okay, meanwhile, Archduke makes it back to City Hall, has a super awkward interaction with the mayor who's giving a welcome speech and is all, we love you. And Ferdinand's all, you have a pretty F way of showing it. Then, despite now clearly valid security concerns, Franz and Sophie decide to go back out in the same open-topped car. This time, though, they're going to go a different route than the published one. Not to avoid more bombs, but to go see the people in the hospital who are injured by the first one. So, original route versus new route, they're going along, this time right to left, where you see pink and green side by side, when the worst mistake so far occurs. Because, see, no one told the driver about the new route. So the driver takes the original turn. Then an official in the car notices they're going the wrong way and tells him to turn around. But to do so, the car has to stop. And it just so happens that it stops exactly where another one of the assassins, Gavrilo Princip, happens to be. Princip, assumedly astounded at his luck, fires two shots. One hits the Archduke in the neck, avoiding his bullet-resistant jacket and necklace of lucky charms that, yes, he had dogged because of the death threats. The second accidentally hits his wife. Now, Ferdinand, whose only real redeeming quality is his deep love for his wife, says, Sophie, don't die, live for our children. And then they both die. Prince follows through with his suicide, but has the same expired cyanide, and before he could shoot himself, is overtaken by an angry mob. He's also arrested. So because of the assassination, one month later, Austria-Hungary declares war on Serbia, Germany and Russia jump in to help their respective allies, and soon much of the world is embroiled in World War I, which I think really brings our mistake counter up to this. Because the thing that's so nuts about the story is that the worst wars in human history might not have happened had some of these mistakes or even just that one wrong turn not taken place. Because without World War I, there would have been no post-war era to birth Hitler in World War II. And yes, it's impossible to know how it would have gone down on our timeline. Obviously, there were other issues happening in Europe at the time, but you can trace all of it back to some of these mistakes. So tonight, I would like to make a toast to multiverse theory. Because if it's true, there is 100% a world out there that never had World War I, World War II, the Holocaust, the atomic bomb, the Cold War. And to that, I'm not sure I've ever had a more deserving toast. Cheers. <laughs>